exciting game number three. Navi taking on VP here in the winner's bracket of the CIS Navi's regional qualifier for the key of major. I'm LD. I'm joined here by Gods. And Gods, you expected a bow. Magnus ban, and you're right on the money. First Radiant stage ban. Yeah, it's, it sounds maybe over the top, but hey, you, you're in a game three decider. You put yourself one best of three away from, Keeper oh no, two night. best of three since there's only one spot from uh, getting to Kiev. You may as well uh, make some adjustments oh. and they make adjustments fast. Whoa. Boy, this draft is going by fast. Okay. All right. Lots of things. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't like step out, you know, to, to take a whiz or I would have come back and the first phase is over. Yeah, so VP, pretty standard VP opening with the Darkseer plus like melee partner. It's not the, the Slada, which they probably would have seconds, preferred over the Night Stalker. The Night Stalker is actually an unusual pick here, but it's picked as five seconds um, for two nine. reasons the Coddle counter as well as the Darkseer partner. So while not the optimal Darkseer partner, time. it is great against Keeper of the Light, ensuring that it's almost always nighttime. You're not going to get good value out of the Aghanim Scepter on the Coddle. Uh, and it is a very nice, aggressive full Navi's position here that low can play as well bend. yeah what what about the the coddle pick for navi is that something you expected out of them is there a particular strategy uh in mind with this like are they trying to rush that eggs and just five man with the healy ward or what are you what are you thinking is the reasoning behind the pick um coddle is very strong right now it's not like a set play style with the hero it's kind of flexible in that you can go for this five-man play with exactly. the accept timing but you can also play split push using the recall as well as like it, it benefits a lot of different core heroes like storm spirit naga siren there's a lot of different cores you can pair well with the coddle so it's very it's pretty open that's i think that's the really nice thing about coddle is there's not like one play style that the coddle like forces you to play uh you can go for aggro lanes coddle's really good in these aggro dual lanes aggro tri lanes uh he's got a really kind of good skill set in that you can mix up your build you can go for a greedy farming build with illuminate you can go for some extra lane presence with mana leak uh so it's it's very flexible and there's no like one set way that this coddle's going to be played team ban. Well, second stage of bans now navi removing the sniper uh, still vp looking at those initiating heroes navi get to draft a reliable stun Ten uh, so they will take remaining. out the sand king uh, which we did see in Game number one was reasonably effective. The Nyx, the other big hero that they grabbed, uh, did well against the Darkseer in the lanes. Reserve time. Uh, not, hmm. I, yeah. yeah they, like, they have the, they have the Connell. Often we see him used a lot with the recall to set up ganks, but you need that hero who can actually make the ganks happen. Yeah, perhaps you do consider banning the Nyx after that general's performance in game one and that the, the Sand King's taken out. So those offlane options are more limited, but... I think the really common uh, Coddle partner we've seen is Brewmaster. That was what Liquid used to do a lot of, these Coddle Brewmaster dual lanes. Um, if you want to really pressure and win the lanes, and that's something, you know, VP maybe have a weak safe lane since they're picking up the Night Stalker. He's unlikely to be in the safe lane. He's more likely to be pairing up with the Dax here. Although I say that game one, they sent Slada to safe lane Narvi's to secure the lanes. And, turn to ban. Yep, as you suggest, they'll, they'll ban out the Knicks, take it away, and uh, limit Navi's offlane options. Have to see what Navi uh, can pull out of the hat if there's anything left untapped that Ten is available. But we do need a good initiator. Yeah, they've been playing a, quite a Five variety of offlane heroes, remain. though. They've run the clockwork with the Coddle in one of their games. They've had the Underlord in the offlane. Uh, they have Reserve been fairly uh, flexible with their offlane options. They've done some Centaur, Radiant which is not going to get through pick. here. It's definitely probably the, the most desired offlaner at the moment. So I don't think Navi is going to be too thrown off by this, and they're probably happy to just fall back on one of their less conventional offline options. They want to go for the five-man push. The other lords great if they want to go for a more ganking style. The clockwork's great, so seconds, it kind of depends what approach they're going to take to this game as to what offline offline they pick. Five seconds remaining. Mm, VP with the with the Night Stalker. You mentioned Reserve kind of a time. counter to the Keeper of the Light. Also a very good map control hero. Uh, and, well, Troll are here that can mow those towers Navi's down to enable that map control. So VP get their carry now, or one of them anyway. Uh, some synergy, I suppose, between that ult and the Night Stalker, but not nothing too amazing. Yeah, nothing nothing insane, but a good hero to fight early with who you can put an Iron Shell on Troll. <laughs> Typically going for like an SMY type build, Five maybe Helm of the Dominator as well. You can just chuck an Iron Shell on him. He runs in and get that extra bit of damage. So definitely a nice hero to have with, with a Darkseer. 
and also it kind of I guess suggests they just wanted to pick this up perhaps before Navi take it and they don't really feel like picking it picking a troll doesn't really reveal a whole lot it's not like a set play cell it's not like a terror blade where it's like all right there's a big like pushing carry that scales to the late game troll is just like that it's kind of like the gyrocopter it's like well it's just it's a gyrocopter it's a troll like it, it you know what you're getting with it it's not a hero you're gonna straight up ca- try and counter pick with any any of your heroes if you're navi and it leaves their most likely their last pick for the, the mid lane they'll probably pick a support fourth and then have the last That's overall right. pick which they're going to try use to to get a good Radiant mid laner oh navi busting out the earth spirit here so uh, good initiator uh, and someone who doesn't really require much farm to to get those initiations off. Also, up against three yeah. melee heroes, the the dream scenario for Magnetize. Yeah, haven't I think they've run one, maybe two games Navi's of Earth Spirit. Time to pick. It's worked out all right for for Navi when I've seen it, but curious to see how they make make this do, work in this this game here. Yeah, let's see. Disruptor grab by VP. Yeah, so pretty standard VP classic support, exactly what they want to have in, in solo sands. So remaining. nothing too crazy there. And again, it, it keeps them mid lane for the for the last overall pick of the draft, so they can counter or time. look to either counter Navi's picks or at least make sure their mid lane has a very favorable matchup to give them a bit of an edge. Yeah, and they have a great uh, hero to give vision for that glimpse with the Night Stalker. So <laughs> definitely some good long range pickoff potential there. So for Navi, we'll see a bit more about what they're going to do, whether the, the jug's going to be like a mid lane jug, which is unlikely since Pycat's been playing this more often than not for them, uh, and exactly what they want to get for Dendi in a game like this. There's a lot of aggressive potential with the Glimpse, with the Night Stalker. The Vision game can kind of come into play as well. So they'll probably want to get something not too like kind of volatile for that mid lane, since it may be a bit of a, a tough mid game for, for Dendi. <laughs> Oh, you mentioned the Underlord. Radiant we will see him back. in the off lane. Uh, gives them some much needed additional lockdown. Uh, some okay D push here, I suppose. Uh, and as for Dendi Heroes, the Invoker, probably his most played one uh, who's still available. But given the success, or should I say Ten lack thereof, that they had, I don't know if they run it in this situation. Also here, they can be dove very hard, and remaining. they really don't have that many saves or defensive abilities, so... I think you you want someone very tanky or uh, at least difficult to go on. Mm. Yeah, I'm not not sold that that would be the the ideal pick for them. They're also a bit lacking in. I mean, they've got lockdown in with the boulder smash and the pit of malice, but it's not like reliable initiation or lockdown. Uh, Earth Spirit once he has a blink becomes a bit more reliable with his initiation, but that's something which makes it hard to start fights, but also hard to, like, if you go for an Invoker, it's, like, hard to instantly save them. If Invoker gets gone on, you haven't got that insta counter initiation team fights done. So I'm, it may... I'm trying to think what's available. Mid. There's, like, OD still out there, I suppose, but he's more yeah. of, like, a, a carry mid than a, a pure initiator. I like it. It's a bit less greedy, perhaps. Um, there's the, the Shadow right. Fiend, the OD ban. There we go. Um, All right, now, now I'm real... I'm, I mean, unless you want to go something that's, like, a kind of team fight ganker like a beast master but you're not going to do that well against troll and lane i imagine no, i don't i don't think i oh, well i don't think the beast master is going to come i would be in mid laner so i don't think they're going to get that for for dendy yeah no i'm, I'm just thinking Five like outside the box remaining. here but yeah um so more likely we'll see like a i think you we you're in a game through time. the side there's still like some level of like leaning towards a comfort hero is always going to be part of it. So maybe they do consider the invoker just for the comfort factor. Otherwise you're looking at like shadow fiend TA, which are also comfort. Like, again, then he's got a decent hero, hero pool, but I think it's more likely we see him on something invoker. he's played before. And there we go. Invoker comes Brilliant out, not the dream pick, I think for their draft, but at least it's something they, they're going to feel all right with 40% win rate. Now, granted that's only out of five games. So you win one more, suddenly it's, it's 60 and it feels a little better, but yeah, not I mean, the best showing in like the qualifiers half, with the zero. Yeah, and they only won like half their group stage games anyway. Well, what they were five and four, so right. it wasn't seconds, like they were winning lots of games and losing with Invoker. And this is why you save your mid pick for last because they see the Invoker. They then pick the lane winner in the TA to go up against that Invoker. So, will be a tough mid lane for Dendi to to farm, and he has got the Earth Spirit to help him out, which is going to be a lot of pressure onto Navi for for the Earth Spirit player. So VP, very much the the run at you and, and dive and find individual hero pickoff style lineup. Almost no team fight aside from Darkseer. Navi, a lot more AoE. 
a lot more five-man potential, but could be quite vulnerable here. You've got Keeper of the Light, who's very squishy. Earth Spirit, normally elusive, but against the Glimpse, I don't know if you can rely on that so much. Invoker, uh, who, especially yeah, early, if he gets caught out, could be in a lot of trouble. Uh, definitely feels like VP yeah. are going to be the, the team All running the at Navi, remaining. Uh, which, I mean, you mentioned they'd like to sit back and farm, but uh, I think they look to get their gods by finding some some kills, and quite a few of them at that first, second night time. Yeah, I think it's maybe less, like, not right away in the laning stage, but definitely once the laning stage kind of collapses and you get your, like, just, yeah, cause second night time is kind of like a around the timing where VP are going to be strong. Once they have level sixes, uh, once they have just, like, I mean, for Darkster, it's like maybe a level seven. So you have a level four Iron Shell, chuck it on a TA, a Night Sword, start running at people, getting some glimpse skills. So Navi going to be the ones perhaps a bit greedier this game. Last game, it was like greed versus greed. It wasn't like a, who's greedy. It was just like a who could use their greed to take better fights, which was Navi. Uh, this time around, it's Navi trying to kind of play the take the greedy approach against the aggressive VP mid game. All right. Who's your money on here? Game three, Navi looking for uh, the upset against VP. I I think it's I draft wise I prefer VP and I think I mean before I saw the draft I would have still stuck with VP just I mean I feel like they made the adjustment they ban they know they just need to maybe ban out that Magnus and now having seen the draft I think I favor VP slightly more but never know it's if then you can have a big game on the Invoker there is the potential there for. Navi to make some plays happen around the map. It is hard because they haven't got good sun strikes up, but that's just I mean, that's what kind of that's where a good invoker player may not need those setups. So we'll see what Dendi can do and whether or not Navi can get enough out of the lanes. I think the lanes is going to be important for them because they've got potential to upset the lanes a bit. Like a Coddle Underlord lane can be very disruptive. The Earth Spirit with his roam around the map can perhaps win win or at least secure the mid lane for Invoker. Pycat's likely to be just left alone a bit. Um, and just trying to have to fend for himself against the Darkseid, which is fine if you can win the other lane. So if Navi can do well in mid and bottom with the Earth Spirit and the Coddle, this, that could be the way for them to succeed in this game three. Yeah, support's going to enter the lanes now as we unpause, get into it. Our men will be looking for that early Observer Ward. And so too will Solo, plants one down bottom. Curious to see where this Earth Spirit heads and, and where the pressure comes is generally this is the main hero you look to for Navi to, to control the lanes to find those early picks. Solo, going to have a smoke break here. We'll scout out our man. And knows there's a ward in the area. In fact, I believe just started painting <laughs> almost immediately in that area. Yep, right on top of it from the Night Stalker. But no sentries as of yet. Is there any? I don't think so. Career is going out. Korea does not have sentries. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Yeah, but they still, you know, they know the wards there, so they can almost abuse that to to maybe mess with Navi and bait them into a, a dive that they're yeah. they're ready for. Yeah, and even just the second you have 100 gold and a support, you just buy it and give it to the TA. TA can tango down the observe ward and get the double regen. So there's there's a lot of like, nice things you can do just knowing where a ward is. I mean, it's 100 gold for the TA as well, so you may as well will take it, I guess. Yeah, it pays but, pays for the sentry. Yep. Yeah. VP going for aggro lanes. That's perhaps the interesting to, thing to note here. Uh, they're going to be sending the troll up top. They're kind of dodging that annoying dual lane. The underlord coddle lane double spam is kind of similar to the coddle brewmaster in what they what they do. You've got a tanky melee hero, the, the brew this time, the underlord, and the coddle who sits behind, spamming illuminate, giving the underlord mana, and just very hard to kind of fight into this lane. So they say, why fight it? Let's just send our carry top. Give Darkseer the, the tougher lane, which is a scenario that Darkseer doesn't really mind too much. He can push it out with Iron Shell and then even use the side pulls to his advantage. And it's basically a zero chance of kill lane. Because you've got uh, a roll in from Armen, not going to connect. Already Lil trying to apply that early pressure to Dendi, who has skilled up Cold Snap first. Uh, did grab the Blades of Attack. But wondering what what's the Dendi build? Is it Quas Wax Gods, Quas Exhort? Is it open? I think these rushing phase boots makes me think this will be a Quaswex build. And that, that, that perhaps makes more sense because we're looking at this like, oh, it's not going to be a good Invoker game. We don't really think Invoker should be the last pick, but th that's kind of more us talking about the Exhort build. So the Quaswex build is going to offer a lot more control in mid game, and it's less greedy because I don't think you can get away with greedy against this VP draft. So that's what Dendi's going to do to make up for it with the Invoker. Go for the more tempo controlling mid game focused build. 
Oh, Pasha oh, under bullied. quite a bit of pressure, but yeah, as you mentioned, Pycat being heavily harassed. Uh, Solo did chew through his clarity potion. and I mean, He's been... already used a salve. Like, that's a salve and two tangos used. He's got two tangos left, but he's gotten three CS and used a salve and two tangos. This is a terrible lane for Pycat. And the bullying also a bit in the mid lane as Dendi sits only four and two. Not an easy lane to CS. Especially if you are going for the, the Quaswex build. Yeah, it's, uh, and the Quaswex loses harder against the TA than the, the other builds, just in terms of CS. The Alacrity build is probably like, if you're in a straight 1v1 with no outside influence and your draft doesn't need a Quaswex and go for you, you'd want to go the Exort, like the, the Wexort build early on to get the Alacrity, but he obviously doesn't feel like he can get away with it. Pike gets that kill, he gets first blood, that makes up for the entire bad laning stage. That is a much needed kill at that. Nice roll in and that's gonna it, help things out there. And we, we say a bad lane stage, but I guess in fairness to Navi, General is completely free farming. Did he catching oh, yeah. up decently here, all things considered. And uh, with that kill now, Pike out having a good time top. So all three lanes going solidly for Navi. Uh, man, this Underlord doing some serious work. Really yeah, making that's... Pasha's life miserable. <laughs> that's why they don't send the troll down there. They just see that lane and they're like, well, troll's gonna have a much better time up top. They were beating Pycat, but giving him that first blood basically offsets all the hard work they had done, harassing him, chewing through his tangos and salve, and stopping him from farming. So Pycat, he's kind of recovered, at least in the first, like, as far as three minute recovery goes with that kill. Viver revving up the Illuminate here. Ramses will dodge away from it. See Solo kind of fencing around, but just the, the constant spam and harassment. Another swing and a miss. Could have been a full go on Ramses, and maybe even a kill had that connected. Really had either one connected, but yeah. not going to happen. Would have been close. But still, just securing the lane, the harass going down, and they've got the Illuminate to continuously spam Ramses as well as the Chakra to sustain them in this lane. and. Pycat at least gets the shop thing, so he gets his poor mid shield, his boots. This lane is kind of being recovered quite nicely. So, laning wise, Navi uh, have secured the top lane now. Bottom lane, of course, being won by the Underlord. The mid lane is still a struggle for Dendi, but he's at least he's getting his levels. He's level four, uh, and with a few more levels, he can start to perhaps do a bit better at harassing the TA Tornado EMP. He's going to have phase boots for some extra damage to last hit with. So this lane gets a little bit easier as Dendi levels up. At first night time, Will clock in and Lil uses that opportunity to grab a bounty rune deep in the enemy jungle. And all sweeps around towards Dendi. Armin there to guard him for the time being, but also about to join the fray is Solo. DP going to converge here on the invoker, uses the tornado EMP offensively. Perfect time to strike. Boulder Smash comes through, connects on all three heroes. Armin, big save there. He'll pay with his life, most likely, yeah, but... Otherwise, it's Dendi who goes down. That's worth it, and that's definitely the downside of ever using those spells offensively. Tornado MP goes down, and they instantly go in top lane, though. They are looking for the, re the return taliation from Ramses. They won't get it, though. Nice TP out, and not a lane that can really do anything about that. This Pasha continues to take some harass, but he is free farming here in his own right to match general. So... Rotation on the, the top lane, Armin rolls in and then follows up with the kick, but he might get punished here. Trying to run away, there is a level one glimpse and he'll use it. Pulls him back in under the tower, Armin dying again. Well, kind of creating space, but not really getting, I mean, the, the, the mid death was totally not his fault and like good for the team. That one, perhaps not so much for the benefit of his team, but he dives in as he did. So no one free farming now in the mid lane, and I, I guess God's looking forward like the next five, ten minutes. What are the? Oh no, oh, the General, bottom. the bash bottom. This could be the, his death. Trying to run away from Ramses. Ramses, getting juked a bit around the tree line. Can he catch this Underlord? Yeah, he's got the axes. We'll finish him off. The Earth Spirit was coming in, but our man a bit late to the party. Let's see. Unfortunate ten percent. Ramses got a, I think two or three right clicks off, but that was all he needed to. Secure the bash and get the kill. That Underlord was very, very farmed as well in that bottom lane. So that's a, a nice kill for a troll who was starting to struggle to hold his own in that top lane. So yeah, He's close to back here there. on the Underlord. He's really big. 
But it will be a mech deferred. Hmm. See where he goes. Probably just keeps going back to the bottom lane. Definitely one of the things with the underlords. You just got to kind of keep farming your lane. You're not like a tempo controlling clockwork type off laner. Talk about the different options for Na'Vi. They went for that kind of greedier farming option with the off lane, but this does give them that strong five man once they have the mech. Gonna move in meanwhile, that jug spin amounting to not, and they have the dust here mid, so they'll bring down the Dendi Invoker. Well, we mentioned coming in, they have a, a pretty low win rate on the hero in this qualifier. And DP showing they know how to punish it. Dive him under tower, kill him under tower, and... I mean, Navi just not the best lineup to counter gank. It's really just the Earth Spirit who can do anything. Not done with the aggression. Night Stalker behind the tier 1 mid. Will force some TPs up, but I'm not sure Navi can actually get any kills off of this. Then he'll come back after respawning, but he's just a level 5, now level 6 invoker. Struggling quite heavily against TA, who is a full level ahead and full 1300 net worth ahead. I'm feeling like the way the game's developing for, for Navi gods, like they're really going to have to rely on 5 manning around this mech. Uh, and the Underlord's early levels, because when it comes to these smaller skirmishes, it just seems like VP are easily going to come out on top. Yeah, well, they'll probably get the mech around the time Pyket has like a Helm of the Dominator, so they'll get that extra creep to play around. I mean, Dendi's a uh, death hero there. Dendi's like not looking for any big item. He's just going to go straight into the urn, so he has that cold snap urn synergy. But realistically, yeah, Navi's going to try and fight fairly early on. Perhaps next this daytime, now they want to start taking some smaller clashes, even before the mech comes up, just to try and use the fact they've got this Quasworks Invoker. And the, the times where I'm seeing these Quasworks Invokers succeed is they're actually rotating around the map, they're getting involved very early on. This Tornado EMP doesn't really scale all that well uh, past like the mid-game stages, so you typically want to try and use it as early on as possible. Yeah, and eventually you get to the mid-delay game and enemy carries very likely to have BKBs and... Then Invoker doesn't offer anything against them with this build. Yeah. He's not going to be able to get that those fast levels too. He's not going for a Midas, so transitioning into that, the full, like, level 25, or level 20, 25 Invoker with all three of the, his elements is going to be tough without that level progression. Yeah, no Midas in sight, and just not going to be able to see us very effectively either, so. As you mentioned, a lot of pressure here on Na'Vi to, to have that strong mid game. Not quite there just yet, but closing in on it. The mech, I believe, going to be picked up momentarily. Oh, I lost my cursor there. Um, still a bit of a waste. He's in, with the arcane boots. He's, yeah, he's just about got the headdress Radiant's and buckler, perhaps. Yeah, he's tower. got oh, Miss Roll. He's got the headdress. It looks like. Pretty much has the buckler yeah. now, so just needs the recipe. Yeah, almost about halfway there, a bit over, and around that mech timing, it will be night time though, and it seems like. Like, is this daytime, typically you'd want to see perhaps a team with a Quasworks Invoker get active, but I think Na'Vi, after the rough laning stage, are just like, let's just use this daytime as a bit of a farming period. Like, it's kind of like, you know VP's not going to be quite as aggressive. They're going to use the daytime to, daytime to farm, so Na'Vi's like, we've got a kind of greedier lineup. We want a mech, we want levels of Invoker. Let's just use this little timing to be a bit greedier. Well, they roll in, they try to find a clean kill on Solo, and it's anything but as the turnaround comes. General getting... Caught out in the bottom lane as he tries to escape. He won't make it. The Underlord goes down. Pasha with the Karate Chop finding the kill. So a two for one there. All right. One at solo, but was it worth it? Not worth it at all. That is the aggression that I kind of spoke of during the daytime, which you can do if you bring the like Invoker or Jug. I feel like you don't want to go for that kind of a dive without one of your other cores involved as well. They had just the Underlord there, they weren't using the Quasworks Invoker, they weren't using the Jug who's got Omni Slash now. If they bring one of those cores, I think that kind of move can work, but those cores are both Dyer's probably telling their team, like, I'm going to farm, I need to catch up. So I think Na'Vi should just have been farming at that stage of the game. Now, VP now, this is what we often see from them, is if they feel like they're comfortable, they'll just really try to take advantage of some quality time in the jungle. Ramsey's using the battle trance to farm and that's also going to accelerate no one cs if we see some ancient stacking later on but for now cleaning those up so economy looking real solid for vp invoker not that great at farming you've got keeper of the light is pretty decent uh 
and the Underlord, who's obviously great, but uh, this is a VP tempo for now. Yeah, I mean, this is like a kind of dream TA game where you just, you go mid, you win your lane in terms of CS, you have your, you farm not just the lane, but the jungle as well. It's been completely uncontested, hasn't had any harass really coming his way, uh, and you're going to outfarm most of the mid laners in the game as a TA outside of like the select few, like the Alchemist type heroes. Uh, when you get this kind of a game, so looking very good for no one. And he's, his team's probably telling him, like, you just keep farming, we don't need you, we're winning these other lanes without you. Hit your Deso blink timing, and then join up with us later on. A little snake in his way through his own woods, gonna backpack on Solo's maneuver into the enemy jungle. Dropped down an aggressive ward, not finding an opening just yet, but now the nighttime clock's in, and the fun begins. For the vampire, they're gonna converge on the mid tower with the alpha wolf now. Ramsey's gonna be looking for a quick tier one mid. Looks like he might find it though. Underlord TPing in, and oh, see you later, homie, because they had the trap in the trees. Well played by no one. And he's yeah, back bottom lane. He's gonna walk his way here. The tower should fall before them, but. Could be a big pick on no one if they can bring him down. He's not quite dead just yet. The Centaur Stomp, well microed, sir, but unfortunately, they're going to lose the Jug anyway. Three heroes biting the dust. Man, that glimpse on General turning out to be so big, gods. If he was yeah, there the, the whole time. Everything. Yeah. Could have been a completely different fight. Absolutely. And that is not the fight Nabi were hoping for defending that lane. They're going to lose the Centaur as well, which is... 125 gold going to the troll, so he gets a tower, he gets a helm of the dominator creep, he backs off to continue farming. They only lost the TA, which is a, I mean, it's a decent kill. It was the most farmed hero in the game, but Navi lost two of their cores. Uh, that was a disaster of a fight for the, for the Navi squad. They are hunting Lil. He will engage with the darkness here, tries to make it out. Rolling boulder tornado forward, good clip there. Then you get a pop with an EMP, which will do absolutely nothing, but the cold snap will get the job done. So finally, Navi find a kill. It's a clean one, but only a support Night Stalker. Yep. Well, immediately transition into a smoke play. Looks like they're not going to try and do anything sneaky on the bottom or top side of the map. They're just going to sit around General in this mid lane to try and secure a tier 1 tower of their own. Radiant Stand, I think they are aware of Navi playing aggressive, going Radiant's for that kind of a smoke, because they scan to protect themselves, but Iron Man comes Radiant in post-scan, gets a ward down, and we'll look to try and secure this mid-tier 1. And Navi's starting to work on that tier 1 in the mid lane. Working towards the Coddle Ags. Definitely looking like they want to go for that big 5-man vacuum. Static Storm combo there. There's the teamwork coordination from VP coming through, and now PyCat's got a turn tail and run away. Lil trying to hound him back. A good job there by the Keeper of the Light, blasting. The Night Stalker away as they pull in again the Pit Lord, bringing him down once more. The Pit Lord just Man, getting picked off repeatedly, and this is a big bucket of gold and experience the VP are just feasting upon. These vacuum static storms under the, the Jug plus one is just winning them fights. It was a really good healing ward placement. Pika had the healing ward there in the tree, so even through the vacuum static storm combo, they survived it thanks to the mech plus healing ward, but they still weren't in fighting shape. They were still very low. And eventually, the, the Disruptor found the Healing Ward in the trees, brought it down, and the fight did start to swing the way of Virtus Pro. So, Navi, neither of those two fights where they kind of fought and looked to defend, Pycat didn't get an Omni Slash off, so they're not really using a lot of their key spells. The Tornado EMP, I think the Tornado and the Clip One Hero, the EMP maybe caught two, but didn't really catch a whole lot. And they're fighting at night. That's really, to me, probably the, the bigger issue out of all of this is you're you're fighting into a vision advantage, not to mention, I mean, Night Stalker just a whole lot more potent at the nighttime as well. Oh, they find Solo. It could be a freebie, but Pycat needs to get in range for the Omni Slash here. The Glimpse already committed. Boulder Smash off the mark from our man, even after the rolling Dyer's boulder forward. Won't be able to find that Dyer's what looked to be simple kill. Meanwhile, Lil mowing down a tower. And if you just follow the Night Stalker right now, he is just charging like a bull headlong past enemy lines. Even if he doesn't get a kill, he's forcing Biver to TP away and, and just has no fear, guys. Kind of a, a microcosm of how the game is going. Yeah, he's feeling very confident. This is like Lil in a very comfy state when he can play this aggressive and 
move around the map as he has. I mean, he, he died that one time well behind enemy lines, but even that was one of those timings where he's just creating space solo even, juking tornadoes and playing super aggressive with his positioning. Let's see Pasha very confident as well in his own right. Fiverr gonna monoleak him. He'll probably just tank the stun here. No, re recall bringing in reinforcements, but from the south come the VP squad. They're content to back off, though, as they are just farming up a storm on their cores. No one. He already got the Deso, now the Blink Dagger. Meanwhile, Ramsey's on the Troll. Sanjin Yasha, very close to completion to go with that yeah. Dominator. Navi should really want to force something. It's daytime now. The darkness was even used, so it's... It's not just daytime, but it's also like permanent daytime. Night Stalker has no way of turning a team fight around with his ultimate and whoa, ooh, dodges the tornado bottom. That would have been a nice pick off if Dendi could have gotten that with the, the Coddle backing him up. Yeah, Dendi did go back for the Midas, but even with the Midas, he is sitting sixth in net worth right now and not having much luck coming back and missing tornadoes like that is, is not going to help. Definitely a slight concern. Coddle, decent farm, is working towards the Aghanim Scepter, has a couple of pieces, but no one finds a pick at mid. Blink Deso, the burst damage is there, and that is a daytime kill. It's daytime, and VP are getting pick-offs, they're securing Roche. This is about as bad as it can get for Na'Vi, given their current position. They're meant to be the ones who are stronger right now. They buy back on Underlord, but I think it may be too late. Oh, is it? Is he going to come in? Could drop the ult and try to move into the pit. No, he's going to TP, looks to engage, and he gets caught in that static storm towards the tail end. The wall also dropped for zoning tactics. Arman very low. Ramsey's looking to move forward here. Is getting cold snap controlled by Dendi, but the follow-up damage simply isn't there. Na'Vi, unable to find the kills just yet. Pycat trying to warm his way into the pit, but also don't think he would kill Roche off in time. They're lacking the single target physical damage, and VP just poised to move back in. Probably hoping that darkness will be Regeneration. allowed to cool down, that Na'Vi won't be able to make a move before then. As Pycat just creeps, creeps. Na'Vi is still very strong, though. They've got Omni Slash, they've got the Quas the Tornado EMP Invoke, which has pretty high uptime, and General's Mech has come back up. Yeah, Ramsey's threatening them. They're going to send no one into the pit alone, and he will get caught out for a moment by the Pit of Malice, but able to blink away. Now Pycat smacking the Roche a couple of times. No Static Storm available for now. But they still move in. They're going to drop the kinetic field. Pycat and General moving past it on the wrong side. They vacuum General away from his team. Tornado coming through. General still alive through all of this. The mech keeps him in fighting shape. No one able to snatch the Aegis away, though. Slays Dendi in the end. And will now look for additional kills. They brought down two. Make it three. Going splat. Our men will fall. And now the trap deployed onto Pycat as he spins away. Looking at least for the safe escape towards the well. Biver, though, might not be so lucky. Pasha chasing him out. Commits the surge. That's four heroes dead, and on top of it, no one still easily hanging onto the Aegis through that. What a disastrous Ooh. fight for Navi. Yeah, they felt so under pressure there, knowing that Roche was as low as it was. It was daytime with darkness still down. Like, I mean, on, on paper, it was a good time to fight. No static storm, no darkness. They had a tornado EMP ready. They had most of their key spells and items, they had the mech up, they had Omni Slash, but Vision was not favoring them. Both TA traps were there, giving full vision of Roshan, giving full vision of the entire Navi team. The, sentry, the sentries weren't around the pit, and as a result, TA knew exactly when to go and steal the Aegis. They had the vision to hit the Vacuum as well. Vacuuming the, the Pit Lord out of the Roche pit to isolate him and bring him down meant that they didn't really get any value out of the mech. He used it just to keep himself alive a little bit longer. It wasn't for his team. And it was just really good use of the vision around the pit by VP. Well, not looking great here for Navi. Gods, can they slow it down a little bit? Head towards late game with farm. Uh, do they need to go for a smoke what? gank? What, what's the game plan if you're Navi? Right, they can try and slow it down by farming and for the late game they've got them by this on invoker but he's still like not in a good position as far as his overall net worth. He's behind the darks here. All three Radiant Cores are ahead of him. The Night Stalker's not far behind him, so slowing it down uh, only works so well. They're going to be forced to defend high ground. That's really the, the scenario here. They're going to become the high ground defenders. It's going to come down to how well 
and effectively they can defend this using the. I mean, they've got great high ground defense. Coddle, Pit Lord, two great spammers, Tornado EMP, very annoying as well. And you want to try and defend with the bare minimum while split pushing. That's exactly what Dendy's doing up top. His team's probably kind of telling him, like, we're going to try and defend these lanes using the Firestorm, the Illuminate. You try and get some objective elsewhere on the map. Looking for the cutoff here. And Pycat able to TP away in the trees. Pasha hoping to catch him snoozing and out of position, but makes it out safely. At least his solo will do his best to bring down the mighty Alpha Wolf. We'll just re-dominate another creep. Make sure he doesn't feed away any gold, so... It's a not too useful Hellbear, but better than feeding the gold away, and Navi by themselves a little bit of time with the uh -oh. ASAP, but VP, oh no, they caught Dendi. Scouting out Dendi, they get off the void, no follow-up. Okay. Still though, just a Night Stalker hit him, and he's like, ah, I'm TPing the hell away. He was just like, he just TP'd and crossed his fingers, hoped he was going to live, because he knew there's there's no running there. Uh, if there's a TA who's going to blink on you, you're dead. If there's not, you TP out, you live, and that was at least the case for Dendi in that situation. So the Hurricane Pike now complete on no one, ramping up his own damage potential as he gets a little extra range to work with. And he's gonna chase further. You know, it's also the the counter item to the Invoker, like the Tornado EMP. There's maybe a small window where you can full stuff yourself out of the EMP. Uh, and even for the late game against the uh, Tornado Chaos Media combo, you want to have the full staff to be able to push yourself out of that uh, Defting Blast Media Tornado combo that the Invokers like to go for. I like these aggressive wards from VP. As you see, uh, they've warded off towards the Secret Shop. They got the lane ward mid. Solo doing a good job at fueling the aggression here. and As well as just the, the, the split push potential RMN taking a single shot in the wrist from that melt bringing him well below half. So they're Lil's just taking over the jungle here. Yeah, and they've got little bottom line. He's like, I'm gonna finish my eggs, you guys control top. TA with an A just is enough of a scare that it seems Navi don't want to leave their base and with good reason Solo gets an easy RMN kill but he pays this with his life. Not really a good trade. Now they get something. Meanwhile on the bottom lane, Pycat I'll try for the TP out, but he's like, oh crap, there's a troll here! He's angry out for blood. We'll bring him down. Gets the bash and gets the kill. That's a big one. Pycat really that one ray of hope is, oh yeah, meanwhile no one. Just chunky Numbiver on the coddle. And guys, this is when Navi spread out. Uh, that VP just shred them. They, they cannot really fight on their own. They've got good pick off the Night Stalker on one side, the TA with a blink deso elsewhere, the disruptive the blinks, they're finding the kills and there the Hurricane Pike getting him out of a dangerous position, but Marishum will expire, so perhaps VP may reconsider this, but they've got the kill the numbers advantage and yeah, no one's on the high ground because of that. I mean look at this TA, no one is just absolutely out of control, going bonkers on AV, burning down our men. They're not showing any signs of backing here either, as TA is healthy. And two heroes dead for 30 seconds, blinking in with the Hurricane Pike and a shove Dendi back towards as well, and no one. Just ignoring the Monolith, shaking it off. We'll go under cover of Meld, it brings down, brings down the tower, looking for the Rex too. With the Troll ultimate up again, VP, they siege very quickly. Melee down, blink out. And Navi unable to chase. BKB nearly complete. And gods, there's basically nothing to do with this BKB. Yeah, they're entirely relying on the Invoker to control these heroes during a fight with tornadoes, with deafening blasts. And once the BKB's there, TA just blinks in, BKBs, kills whoever he wants to. Omni Slash, I guess, can be used, but you Omni Slash at TA when she BKBs, and she's got refraction up, so you're not going to kill her, you're just wasting an Omni Slash cooldown. And won't really amount to all too much, so very, very tough game for Navi to pull back. They lost the Rax there, that was without the Aegis even being either. The Aegis had expired, I guess they'd lost a few heroes to the Aegis TA, but this game just gets tougher and tougher. VP can maintain the map control they've got if they want, and then just secure another Roshan. They can try and smoke up to find pickoffs. They've got the Ags on Night Stalker, so while Coddle's got an Ags as well, it's going to be nighttime much more often than it's daytime, and that's where this Coddle Ags is just not going to provide Navi the vision and utility that they hoped it would give them. Losing all semblance of map control now is with that tier 3 down, they'll be
begin to drop the shrine, so Navi even tougher to leave the base. Relying heavily on the Keeper of the Light. Uh, that That is the main way to get out. Still no BOTs up on Dendi. Uh, the problem, though, is they're very mobile on this VP side. So you leave the base with Keeper, and you might just run into the freight train. And yep. here, here it comes now. The plow is on the move. Oh, yeah. They'll see everything as soon as that nighttime hits. And they can pop the darkness before nighttime to transition into night so they get that elongated nighttime period. And a blinkin', you'll miss it. <laughs> Take a second too long to move your camera, you'll miss then it as well. He, he wasn't responding to the heroes there. Gets the full stuff out, but he's glimpsed back. And caught, and in a lot of trouble. Oh, almost two shot there. The Guardian's Greaves helping to keep him alive. Instead, it's on the Biber. So they'll go, no one not actually killing anyone off after that initial Earth Spear kill, but does drive two back to the well and quickly turning to look at this tower. Styling on them, just going in on whatever he wants to at this point. Really not afraid. And why should he be? They just can't seem to touch him. The vacuum, static storm combination, catching out to a beautiful grab by Ha Solo playing like a, a true team fella here as Ramsey's going to bring down another. That's Dendi, General hitting the deck, Pike had about to follow. And VP showing. Insane teamwork. Four hit the deck. Navi, they're they're out of it, gods. There's just nothing in the tank. Yeah, it's, it's all over. It's, yeah, we go. They'll, they'll GG out. No one getting completely out of control. Ends things with an ultra kill in his Templar Assassin. And VP with a much more dominant game three. It was a close game one that they took. A good comeback from Navi in game two. But this is like perhaps more the VP people expected. Uh, coming into this qualifiers and coming into this specific match against Navi who struggled in the group stages VP were undefeated I think Navi put up uh, a really good showing but this game three draft wise uh, And just leading stage wise was a bit of a flop. Well, we've seen you know uh, quite a bit of uh, Anger I would say from Lil in, in recent interviews where you know He basically it doesn't doesn't respect some of the teams they've lost to and you know essentially chalks up like we played like crap But we're a lot better than these guys VP still yet to really show it, I think, at a at a Valve event. But there, that game one seems like uh, it it was. Or sorry, that game two like lit a fire under the ass, and they came out really looking scary in game three. Gods. Yeah, it's definitely a very unforgiving qualifier because all it's going to take is like a well, I guess initially two best of three losses and you're out. But like that grand finals, all it takes is a slip up in a grand finals, and you may be the best team, but you lose that best of three, and you're out. And I think VP they know that. Uh, they've they've seen other teams come close, like the Boston qualifiers, where teams like uh, Secret missed out on. They know that you've got to be on your A game for the entire qualifiers. So a single loss to Navi in a best of three is definitely going to be something that they're, they're, they're talking about after this series, uh, going into their, their final series of the day later on. So they can't have those kind of slip-ups if they want to be winning this qualifier and obviously doing even better when it comes to Kiev if they get there. All right, guys. Well, that wraps up Navi versus VP. VP, as expected, as far as results go, will be moving on. But I think for most, uh, even Navi taking a game, a bit of a surprise. We'll see if they can bounce back. They drop to the lower bracket. VP awaiting the winner of our next series. I'm LD. He's Gods. You're watching the CIS qualifiers here at the Kiev Major. And we'll be back in just a little bit as the action continues. E-gaming bets.